Pennsylvania in the Poconos in eastern Pennsylvania in the Pocono Mountains. And the field is now moving out off the starting grid for the race into that first turn. Watch the guys back around the fourth row. They're down to the inside trying to jump the start. There's a lot of horsepower in the Camaros. They should lead into the first turn. And I think you're either going to see Warren Smith or Gene Kelly take it. Green flag. Green flag for the Kelly American Challenge. 45 minutes around this very tight 2.8 mile circuit. And Vern Smith jumps out in front and Felton drops back to third immediately as the field works their way through the oval, the first turn, and into the second very tight turn, the one they call the hairpin. What happened there, Bob, is Tommy Riggins was able to follow Vern Smith in his pole position right by Gene Felton. See, Tommy Riggins was down on the inside, and he's able to hold that inside position, go next to Gene Felton and force Gene to the outside, which put Gene back into third. Three cars, a veritable train, working their way through the slowest section of the course. Smith, Riggins, and Felton, nose to tail, around the devil's elbow. When they get up in the back straight, they are really going to be hauling the mail down that long straight. It's banked as they get up on there, swings to the right, and then the long pond straight, which takes them down into the banking at the far end of the circuit. Vern Smith out in front. Those are all Camaros. Those are One. Chevy Camaros. Uh, it's a pretty highly modified car, Bob. Uh, they changed the rules last year. There goes Felton. Gene Felton moving back, showing Tommy Riggins that, by golly, I belong in second. That's where I'm going to be. Felton's opinion is that he belongs in first all the time. <laughs> right, that's for sure. He just <laughs> ran off of this series last year. This year he's had all kinds of mechanical problems that has kept him out of winner's winter circle every race but one. This is the next to the last race in the series, and Vern Smith is leading in the series, and he could clinch the season championship here at Pocono today. They've completed the first lap. A minute and 39 seconds. We'll get you the speed on that in just a moment. You can see these big, heavy cars really fighting their way around that oval first turn and driving into what is almost a W-shaped section of the course. Belt and Smith and Riggins, those three cars, one, two, three, and Lynn St. James is already moved up that she owns an opera. The leader's going up onto the back straightaway section of the course. Felton taking a little lower line through there than is Bird Smith. Felton closing down. These cars will draft down this long straight, Bergie. Oh, yeah, they'll draft. They'll try and get right up behind each other. There's Gene Felton. There's the effect of the draft. He's able to pull up, pull along side. Wheel to wheel. Down inside. And away he goes. Now you're going to see Vern Smith draft on Gene Felton. Now as they come around by us, you're going to see him come down the start and finish straight. I wouldn't be surprised to see Vern Smith drop down to the inside of Gene Felton and try and hold the inside line into turn one. Let's see if he can do it. It is a cool, breezy day in Pocono. Ah, there's a racing move. Vern Smith may be content just to ride along behind Felton for a while. Not taking it easy, particularly, but there is no lap prize money at stake here. And he can save a little bit of the car by just following Belton around. Looks like he bobbled a bit there because Belton opened up a couple more car links on him. Well, if Burns Smith can follow right behind Gene, he puts a lot of pressure on him. And believe me, sometimes it's easier to be running second right on the tail of the leader. You put a lot of pressure on him. You force him to drive in a line maybe he doesn't want to. Felton stretching it out there as he goes through with the devil's elbow. That red Camaro is Riggins. There is Gene Felton. Gene Felton, the Georgian. He builds race cars. He has a, a parts company, and he also has a cosmetics operation. Uh, Gene doesn't look like the kind of guy who'd sell you face cream, does he? Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> but he does. The white and purple Camaro out in front. Gene Felton is really at home in these big cars. When you watch him drive and when you're near him on the racetrack, he's totally at ease. And the bigger the car, the more noise it makes, the bigger his smile. He just loves these things. Especially here at uh, Pocono because he spent, he spent so much of the time on the tri-oval. And he is well accustomed to oval. Any difference at all. Bird Smith now closing down a little bit, Felton, as they go through the oval turn leaving the home straightaway, going into the infield section of the course. You can watch Felton's hands on the wheel, working it back and forth. To keep going. Gene 
belt and the leader. Interesting situation here, Bob. These cars weigh a little bit over 4,000 pounds. They're coming down the straightaway, which Moved is by Vern fun. Smith. We have about 30 minutes remaining in the 45-minute race. Vern Smith back out in front. They're going around one of the slower cars. That appears to be Nick Vigiani and a Hornet. You know, Bob, there's an interesting thing that can happen from a driver's viewpoint that we're not aware of. Uh, I'm not saying that this did happen. However, sometimes if a driver can't get away from another driver and he's hounding him, he'll think, okay, I'll follow you for a while and uh, I'll put the pressure on you. You know, if you can get the other guy to make a mistake and spin, uh, you can uh, get a pretty easy win. Right now, both those guys are working hard. So maybe Gene thought, okay, Vern, I'll let you down and uh, let you go by me and uh, we'll see what happens. One of the problems you can get into, though, if you run too close behind that lead car with Smith in front, Felton in second, if you if you run right nose to tail with it for too long, you can overheat your engine because you don't get enough air in there. That's right. Uh, fortunately, on this racetrack, they get into the infield, so uh, they get a chance to let the engine breathe. That's Gene's wife, and there's Gene, back out in front by a nose, by about a wheel. By golly, that's good racing. That that's is really good racing. Marvelous racing. Burns down below the white line. That shows that car handles pretty well. And you can drive them down there. Oh, little wiggle there. Now we've got a little slower traffic. I think they'll split this car. Coming up on Lynn St. James, I think it is. No, that's not Lynn. Check that. Handle that slower car with no particular problem. That is where Smith took over the lead one lap ago. That was Paul Lean in the Oldsmobile Cutlass. Paul did what most drivers will do. He'll see the fast guys coming up behind him. He'll hold position. If he moves one way or the other, it creates a problem. They know they can go around him, but if he darts to one side or the other, uh, that's the one thing they don't expect. Well, when they were coming down that home straightaway, side by side, Lean probably didn't know where to go. <laughs> the Camaros are coming. The Camaros are coming. Smith, about five car lengths.